Good evening, it's Sunday, February 14th, and you're watching live coverage of the Progress 77 resupply mission to the International Space Station. I'm Leah Cheshire here in Mission Control Houston at NASA's Johnson Space Center, where flight controllers are monitoring all of the systems aboard the station and are have just recently given a green light for launch of Progress tonight. Controlling the Progress vehicle and monitoring its data are engineers at the Russian Mission Control Center in the town of Koryov on the outskirts of Moscow. And this view from the balcony of the Russian Mission Control Center where teams are monitoring the Progress vehicle. Everything continues to proceed smoothly uh, through as we look forward to countdown and liftoff tonight at 10.45 p.m. Central Time. Looking at a live view at Site 31 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, where the Soyuz 2.1A booster rocket stands fully fueled and ready to launch the unpiloted Russian resupply cargo spacecraft, Progress 77, on its two-day, 33-orbit journey to the International Space Station. Upon launch tonight at 11.45 p.m. Eastern Time, it will be 10.45 a.m. Baikonur Time, Monday the 15th. Progress will begin its just over two-day journey to the station, arriving in the morning of February 17th for an automated docking at 1.20 a.m. Eastern Time. Currently in Baikonur, uh, at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, it's 26 degrees Fahrenheit with mostly cloudy skies, a temperature not too different from what we're currently experiencing here in Houston, Texas. And at the time of launch, the International Space Station will be flying 260 statute miles over southern Argentina. The station and its crew of seven are currently flying 261 statute miles over the Pacific Ocean and the crew on station is currently sleeping. They will uh, get to sleep for another hour and 40 or so minutes. Currently living aboard, we have four NASA astronauts. That's Michael Hopkins, Victor Glover, Shannon Walker, and Kate Rubens. One JAXA astronaut, or the Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency, Soichi Noguchi. And two Roscosmos cosmonauts, Sergei Rizhikov and Sergei Kuzferchkov. They will be monitoring the arrival of the Progress vehicle on Wednesday morning. However, it is a fully automated vehicle and is expected to dock to the Piers docking compartment. Monday night on February 8th, the Progress 76 cargo resupply craft undocked from the International Space Station and re-entered into the Earth's atmosphere as planned, uh, making way for Progress 77 to dock to the Piers docking compartment on Wednesday, February 17th. However, Progress 77 will not be the only Progress craft aboard the station, as Progress 75 still resides at the aft of the Zvezda module and provides reboost capability from that port.
rocket rollout of Progress 77 occurred Friday, February 12th from its integration hangar at the Baikonur Cosmodrome, less than half a mile to the launch pad where it stands today. Engineers having connected the necessary fuel and power lines to prepare the rocket for liftoff at 10.45 p.m. Central Time. The Progress spacecraft launching tonight is carrying over 1.1 tons of cargo for the station's res residents, and that uh, consists of 1,311 pounds of propellant, 117 pounds of nitrogen, 926 pounds of water, a total of 2,354 pounds. You can see these gantry arms being attached to the Soyuz 2.1A booster, and we saw those removed just about five minutes before coming on air tonight, so about 35 minutes prior to liftoff. One of the first major uh, things that we'll see, first major milestones as we proceed toward countdown. It's been a busy time aboard the International Space Station with crew members recently having completed two spacewalks, preparing uh, the station for installation of new solar arrays later this year, also working on some cable and antenna rigging for the Bartolomeo Science payloads platform outside the European Space Agency's Columbus module. Those spacewalkers, Mike Hopkins and Victor Glover, also installed the final lithium-ion battery, completing power upgrades that began in 2017 aboard the station. And following progress arrival on Wednesday morning, they'll be looking forward to the launch of the Northrop Grumman 15th commercial resupply mission to the station, scheduled for Saturday, February 20th. There are two service umbilicals still attached to the side of the Soyuz booster. The first of those will retract around the T minus 33 second mark, and the second will retract about 12 seconds before launch, initiating the engine start sequence and resulting in the turbo pumps coming up to flight speed and the hold down arms being retracted to allow for liftoff and the beginning of progress journey to the station. Again, that liftoff time coming up at 10.45 p.m. Central which is 9.45 a.m. Baikonur time. Launch through spacecraft separation is controlled at the blockhouse in Baikonur, but at the time of separation, flight control will be transferred to the team at the Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow. The first stage of the Soyuz 2.1A booster has liquid fuel engines and strap-on boosters. Those are currently fully fueled. And those white clouds you see coming from the rocket is uh, the rocket itself venting liquid oxygen. Completely normal, everything continuing to go smoothly as we proceed toward countdown, now about 20 minutes away until liftoff.
We'll be looking for several milestones tonight as we continue the countdown toward liftoff at 10.45 p.m. Central Time. The first of those will be at T minus seven minutes when a physical launch key is inserted at the launch bunker by the launch conductor to transition the launch sequence into automatic mode. Around T minus five minutes and 30 seconds, the launch conductor in Baikonur will report if the range is clear and the Soyuz rocket is ready to begin its journey. At T minus four minutes, onboard systems will switch to autonomous control, followed by the booster tanks being pressurized for flight, optimizing the flow of fuel. And inside three minutes and 30 seconds before launch, the key to the drainage position at the launch site will be turned into the proper position. Soyuz booster itself will go on internal power at T minus one minute, and then we'll be looking to see those umbilicals, which you can see attached to the rocket. We'll look to see those retract beginning around T minus 35 seconds. At T minus 12 seconds, that second umbilical retraction will ignite engine start sequencing. And once the engine starts, the turbo pumps will come up to flight speed, eventually maximum thrust, and we will see liftoff at 10.45 p.m. Central Time. Now under 15 minutes until liftoff of the Progress 77 spacecraft. After liftoff tonight, we will stay on the air through several milestones. The first will be looking for first stage shutdown and separation at one minute and 58 seconds after launch. Three minutes and three seconds after launch, we'll see the launch shroud jettisoned. That's the area protecting the spacecraft. At 4 minutes and 37 seconds after launch, we will see second stage shutdown and separation, and third stage ignition. Third stage will continue to fire until 8 minutes and 45 seconds after launch, when we see third stage shutdown, spacecraft separation, and orbital insertion.
we'll stay on the air and look to see the unfurling of progress solar arrays as well as uh, their navigation antennas and checkouts of the external camera. And as we mentioned, this will be a 33-orbit rendezvous with progress arriving at the International Space Station Wednesday morning. It will complete an automated docking around 1.20 a.m. Eastern Time. Twelve minutes now until liftoff of Progress 77 from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. As we mentioned, Progress is launching from Site 31, which is where all Soyuz launches currently take place until refurbishments are complete at Launch Site 1, called Gagarin Start. The launch pad from which Yuri Gagarin lifted off to become the first human in space, and that's 60 year anniversary coming up this April 12th. Ten minutes until liftoff of Progress 77. Once Progress arrives, it will dock to the Piers docking compartment, where it will stay until later this year. Upon undocking, Progress 77 will extract the pier's docking compartment to clear the Nader port and make way for the Nauka module to launch on a proton rocket later this year.
The team at the Russian Mission Control Center in Koryov outside of Moscow has confirmed their readiness for launch, now under nine minutes until liftoff. Coming up on T minus seven minutes until launch, that physical launch key preparing to be inserted at launch bunker by the launch conductor. This will transition the launch sequence into automatic mode. The next milestone coming up in about one minute when the launch conductor in Baikonur will evaluate and report if the range is clear. And we've just heard the call that they are go for launch. Five minutes now until scheduled liftoff for the Progress 77 resupply craft from Site 31 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. Teams will begin purging the fuel lines of the rocket engines with nitrogen to fireproof them by removing any vapors of fuel and oxidizer. And coming up at T-minus four minutes, the onboard systems will switch to autonomous control, followed by the booster tanks being pressurized for flight, optimizing the flow of fuel.
Now inside three minutes and 30 seconds until launch, the key to the drainage position at the launch site will be turned into the proper position. The valves through which evaporated or gaseous O2 escapes from the fuel tanks into the atmosphere are closed and fuel will begin draining back into the tanks to maintain proper weight distribution of the vehicle. And that process is underway. This view of the Russian Mission Control Center in the town of Koryov outside of Moscow. Flight control teams monitoring the vehicle. Coming up on 2 minutes and 30 seconds until liftoff. At the 1 minute and 30 second mark, the ground propellant feed to the first stage of the Soyuz booster will be terminated. And at T minus 1 minute, the Soyuz booster itself will go on internal power. The booster propellant tank pressurization has been initiated. And that T minus 1 minute and 30 second mark will be looking for that ground propellant feed to the first stage of the Soyuz booster to be terminated. Now under 1 minute until launch. Soyuz booster will be on internal power. In about 10 seconds, we'll be looking for retraction of the first umbilical. The vehicle is on internal power and there's retraction of the first umbilical looking for the second to come in a, at about the T minus 12 second mark. The launch command has been issued. We have engine start and the second umbilical tower separation. Turbo pumps at flight speed and lift off of the 77th Progress Resupply Vehicle for its two day, 33 orbit journey to the International Space Station. The flight continues nominal so far, first stage. Structural parameters are nominal and this animation showing us what is happening with the Soyuz 2.1A booster, its first stage engines continuing to fire. Vehicle is reported stable and that first stage continuing until about 1 minute and 58 seconds after launch. Now 1 minute into the flight of Progress 77.
Parameters being reported as nominal at liftoff, the International Space Station was flying 260 statute miles over southern Argentina. Everything continuing to be reported as nominal. And we've had first stage shutdown and separation. Strap-on solid rocket boosters have been jettisoned. The spacecraft now traveling at 4,500 miles per hour in velocity. 29 miles in altitude and 29 miles downrange from the Cosmodrome. Continuing to hear nominal calls coming up next at about uh, three minutes after launch. We'll see the launch shroud jettison as you've seen in this animation. Now three minutes into the flight of Progress 77 aboard a Soyuz 2.1A rocket. The vehicle is stable. All good reports on its journey to the International Space Station. Now traveling 5,200 miles per hour and we've just had confirmation of the launch shroud jettison. Coming up at 4 minutes and 37 seconds after launch, the second stage shutdown and separation will occur. Everything continuing to be nominal, now 3 minutes and 47 seconds after launch. this view from the balcony of the Russian Mission Control Center in Koryov. And reports of the second stage engine functioning nominally. The view on the screen in the Russian Mission Control Center, a camera on the upper stage of the Soyuz 2.1A booster. And with second stage separation, we have third stage ignition. The vehicle now traveling 9,300 miles per hour. All reports coming back clear for Progress and uh, the Soyuz 2.1A booster as it continues its journey to the International Space Station. The third stage engines continue operating as planned. And those third stage engines will continue to burn until 8 minutes and 45 seconds after launch, so under 3 minutes from now. Good data from Progress 77 
and its third stage continuing to burn now 6 minutes and 35 seconds after liftoff. Less than two minutes until third stage shut down. Now seven minutes into the flight, everything continuing to proceed as planned. Good pitch, roll, and yaw programs of the vehicle. Just about one minute now until third stage shut down. Those third stage engines continuing to fire as planned, the vehicle operating well. About 30 seconds left in this third stage. And you can see third stage shutdown and separation from the Progress 77 vehicle right on time, 8 minutes and 45 seconds after launch. And the unfurling of Progress 77's solar arrays. And the second set of antennas have been deployed as well. Teams on the ground will begin testing the external television camera. All parameters being reported as nominal. Oh, and with spacecraft separation, the flight control has been transferred to this team here at the Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow in the town of Koryov.
Hearing good reports about the Progress Solar Arrays, which we saw deployed from the spacecraft. Pre-programmed engine firings will raise Progress altitude to match that of the station. The spacecraft now traveling about 17,500 miles per hour in its preliminary altitude of 125 statute miles. Recapping some milestones from today, liftoff occurred on time at 10.45 p.m. Central Time, 9.45 a.m. at the launch site in Baikonur. The Soyuz 2.1A booster lifted off from Site 31 in Baikonur and all three stages operated as expected, propelling progress into its preliminary orbit where it now resides. Progress will stay at the station on the Earth-facing side of the Russian segment until later this year. Upon undocking, it will extract the pier's docking compartment and clear the port for the Nauka mo module to launch on a proton rocket. Coming up next for Progress 77, you can tune in for live coverage of its automated docking to the station early Wednesday morning beginning at 12.30 a.m. Eastern Time with that docking scheduled around 1.20 a.m. Eastern Time. And with good reports from Progress, thank you for joining our launch coverage tonight and we hope you'll tune in for docking on Wednesday morning. This is Mission Control Houston.